Valencia has got the power now, to be honest, it's got the power and, and they're investing a lot of money. So it's getting very, very trendy, it's attracting a lot of people coming from abroad. I would say that time for Valencia has come. Valencia truly goes mad for it after nightfall. The rest of Spain calls it Party Central. Valencia, Valencia is the best. Style. It's perfect. That's even more impressive when you remember Spain's the country that invented fiesta. Valencia has one of the highest concentrations of bars in Spain. But these aren't pikey pubs. The nightlife has a style all of its own. From backlit marble to suede-covered walls, it's designer bar Babylon. There's one built around part of the old Moorish city wall, the perfect place to practice salsa or try the local cocktail, deceptively named Valencia Water. Even the Luz live la vida loca, and after several Valencia waters, the attention to detail is much appreciated. Even in Valencia's older quarters, there's still modern architecture to be seen. One bold example is the Museum of Enlightenment. The exhibits inside are a bit bland, but for me, the building is the biggest attraction. You probably wouldn't normally approach a concrete building in the middle of a town like this, but the Museum of Enlightenment is a real treat. Once you enter this incredible hallway, you realize that everything is made out of concrete and it's beautifully detailed. So you get this wonderful rhythm of dots which go around the building, which hypnotically keep you kind of concentrating on what this building is made from. Round another corner is something completely different, a very old space used in a very new way. The nuns have left this convent and contemporary exhibitions have moved in. This one's part of Valencia's biannual festival. Appropriately enough, it celebrates the ideal city. What's really surprising about entering the space is that you come through those wonderful old doors into this fantastic Gothic building, and then bang, you see this fantastic contemporary installation, which is a real surprise, because it doesn't jar with the building, but actually complements it. This clever mixing of old and new is what makes this city special. What's exciting about Valencia is not just its great buildings and cutting-edge design. It seems to be a city that's continually evolving. Spain's third biggest city could soon be its number one style destination. The last time I was in New York was a couple of years ago for the Emmy Awards with the Smack the Pony Girls. We were nominated for the second year running. We thought there's no way we're going to win twice. We were sitting at a big table with Ali G when our names were pulled out and he left. His girlfriend invited us back to his hotel to try and cheer him up. After my excruciating acceptance speech, I badly needed another drink. I ended up here, pissed out of my head, clutching my glorious Emmy. The Hudson on West 58th Street is the sixth collaboration between the duo who made hotels hip, property developer Ian Schrager and designer Philippe Stark. They also did the Sanderson and St. Martin's Lane in London. Within the one huge space, you get lots of different atmospheres. It's not just a hotel, but a whole lifestyle. Schrager came up with the idea of lobby socialising, getting guests out of their rooms to hang out together. Hi, hi there. Hello, good morning. After winning this, me and the Smack Girls were the biggest show-offs ever. We posed around on these fabulous sofas. We really were princesses for a night. A waiter, another strawberry. This is just one of the bars. Last time I was here, I couldn't see straight enough to notice all the books. It's inspired by an English stately home, obviously. 
Thank you. That's my Emmy. It's lovely, isn't it? Do you want to touch it? Well, you can't, because it's mine. Actually, could you put it somewhere safe? Because uh, I don't trust this town. <sighs> Careful. The designers describe the hotel as an urban adventure. So to get your money's worth, you need to get your butt off the sofa. The Hudson is one of my favourite buildings because it's a hidden world. When I'm here, I feel special, a little bit surreal, like I'm in a French film edited by Salvador Dali. It's amazing to think this building started out as a women's refuge in the late 20s. Schrager and Stark went back to the original plans when creating the thousand bedrooms. Now they look like cabins on an ocean liner, with first-class travel reserved for the penthouse suite. Do you mind? First time I came to New York was during my year off. I jet-setted about like an 18-year-old freak. I'd get home from work, sleep till about nine, get up, party till four, go home to bed for an hour and then get off for work. Night after night after night. I used to hang out with Andy Warhol. Oh, look, there I am. The Hudson has some of the glitz and glam of the best clubs, which is no surprise. Back in the late 70s, Ian Schrager co-owned New York's legendary Studio 54. But after just 33 months, the club was shut down and he was sent down for tax evasion. He taught himself about architecture in prison. It's how he began his career as the world's coolest developer. Schrager's skill is a keen understanding of design, but with added flair. The bar is a great example. The translucent floor is lit from beneath. Schrager decided that women spent a lot of time getting ready, and their looks often went appreciated in a dimly lit room. Or, put that another way, you get a better look at women's skirts. I love the mix of classical and modern. These Regency chairs have silicon cushions. Ah. As soon as you get bored with one vibe, you can switch to another. It's brilliant with all these different places you can go. I'm a bit of a hotel hippie. I like a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I like tapas. A little bit of bar, a little bit of spa. The Hudson is unique and original. Full of artistic flair, yet at the same time it's quite tongue-in-cheek. Definitely not up his own ass. Now, can I please get some sleep? Next time on Dream Spaces, putting the inn into Innsbruck. Buildings in camouflage, so this season. Members only, the ace of clubs. And Paul Kay gets a kick from Highbury Stadium. Thanks.